Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the 8-Bit Retro Refix. Um, this is episode 3 of the SX64 um, build where we installed the replica boards. Um, I sure think I showed you the, I'm going to get the Kawari, I put some other bits and pieces in it, but you'll see that in the video shortly. Um, thank you for watching these episodes, um, thank you for watching my channel, um, your subscription um, and hitting the notification bell really helps me. Um, it's been a wild two years, coming up February almost, um, this is, I think this is my second Christmas on YouTube. Um, so thanks guys, thanks guys, thanks for your support. If you want to pop down um, into the description, you'll find us links into the Facebook uh, group, so you can come along and join us there. You're all welcome. Um, we're also on Twitter, Instagram, um, and on Patreon if you want to support us that way. Um, so, 2022 Christmas. Guys, have a lovely Christmas. Keep warm. I hope you get everything you dreamed of. Um, and we'll see you in the new year. So let's get on to episode three. We hope you enjoy it. Bye for now. So this is where I've got to with the SX um, build. Um, so this is, if you remember in the previous episodes, the replica PCB. This is one of the first in the world, the replicas. Um, what I've done since then is I've installed a Kawari VIC chip. Um, I've also put a wire on there so I can switch between NTSC and PAL modes. There's also the clock chip down there, um, the 8701 that controls the timing. I've removed that because the Kawari has its own on board. I do have to flash the firmware in the Kawari and link pin 3 of the top side chip over here um, and bring it over to pin 6 of the cartridge port so it gives uh, the clock signal to the cartridge port. That should enable like things like your REUs and things like that. Um, I took out the PLA and put one of those neat ones, little small ones, the flat packaged ones. I thought I'd put one of them in there. I'm thinking about putting an arm SID in as well. Um, what do you guys think? If you've got any comments or you think you know you should do it this way, should do it that way, drop us a comment. I'd love to hear from you. So that's what I've done up here. So we've got the quarry in, we've got the, the new PLA style in there, and I've taken the clock crystal out of there. Um, and we've got an NTSC switch. The reason why um, this side is over here. As you can see, it looks a bit skew if. Well, this is a CRT unit. Um, the CRT unit only accepts NTSC signals. When I was running the Kawari in the NTSC mode, the, the screen was still black and white, like as if it was still outputting in PAL. My intentions in the beginning was to pull out this um, CRT screen. So that's what we've gone ahead and done. Um, so if I just lift that out of the way, you should be able to see. So what I've done is um, a 3D printed um, an LCD mount. I then picked up the original wires from the power supply for the CRT. All I've done is I've put some pin headers inside there um, and then soldered the wires to the end of the pin headers um, and then shrink wrapped shrink it over it. So it were non-destructive. So if I want to put that CRT back in, I can just unplug these and put it straight back in. It's not a problem. So that's the power pickup. I do have to split into that again and wire, solder two more wires to that power because we're going to need 12 volt feed for the, for the audio amp that I'm going to have to put in there. The reason why we have to put an audio amp in there is because the audio amp is built into the CRT unit. So currently it's got no audio at all apart from what comes out at the rear port. Going for the video signal well it all comes down one line and it comes out of i think it's c18 i think up here i could be wrong it's 18 it's this socket up here anyway 
It's only got five pins in it. You've got Luma Chroma, um, ground, um, and audio. So that runs all the way down and around here, um, as you can see there. The black and the white is audio, and, and these are Luma Chroma and ground. So again, all I've done is got a pin header, stuck a pin header into the socket. Um, Sold of the wires to wings which, which I wanted. Um, and wired it straight in that way. So it was really, really easy. So coming off pin one of this plug socket up here, comes all the way down, all the way down here, uh, which is Luma. And that goes to the yellow. So pin one, if we look over there, is white. So white goes in the, into the Luma. Um, and when you just follow down, Chroma is pin two. So you come down, pick up the, for the Chroma, um, which I believe is, is, you know, it's a purpley color on my eyes. It could be blue, but it um, definitely looks purple under this light. Um, and then obviously we've got the black, which is the ground. So that took us video signal. So that took us Luma Chroma, converted it into S video, I believe, um, and fired into there. This control board that you can see across the top here, um, this is to set your, your brightness, contrast, etc. It does have an on and off switch as well. You can just leave it switched on, it automatically comes on when you switch the SX on and it goes off when you switch it off, obviously. So you don't need the on and off switch up here. Um, you just set your video qualities up and leave it there. I didn't know what to do with that. Um, so if you guys have got any ideas, if you think I should move it and put it somewhere else, um, let me know. I was thinking about um, putting a small hole in the side of this case. Don't really like doing things like that. Um, but I was thinking about putting a little hole through the side of there and pushing it through there and sticking it on the underside of this carriage so I could get to the buttons if, if I needed them without having to take the top off. But I don't think I'm going to have to do that. So if, tell me what you think. I mean, I think they're happy there. Um, but if you think you want me to move it, just, just drop me a comment and I'll do that. So that's that. Um, that there is for VGA, if you want to put a VGA output on it. I'm not doing that for this one. I don't really want to do that. Um, I just wanted it to look um, as close as I can to an original SX, um, but obviously having a nice crystal clear screen. So that's how far we've got. Um, episode four, we are going to pick up, um, and I'll show you a picture of the audio amp that I've got there. Um, around this other side up here is the volume control. If you look on that, if you look on that picture, if you look on that picture, you can see it's the same rotary knob. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to take some uh, wires from the back of the audio here, um, take that knob off that picture, um, and wire run the wires into that. So I should be able to use the original um, volume control then to be able to control the volume. So yeah, looking at that picture, um, you can see that a little jack plug there for the audio in. I'm just going to desolder that. Um, listen, I'm not going to need it, are we? Um, so I may as well put the wires straight to the board. Um, you power in and out, that's obviously going to split off here. And then the final two on there that you can see, they're for your output to your speaker. So I'm thinking about 3D printing a case or a box um, to set a speaker into it. Um, and then put that unit inside it. Um, so we'd only have to run three wires up to this side over here, which would be quite good. So, tell me what you think. If you've got a better option for the audio, I'd love to hear it. Um, but that's what I'm going to go with at the moment. If I have all the one, the one expensive, I think it were only about five pounds off eBay. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment, guys. Um, so I'm going to spin this around now, um, and I'm going to let you have a look at the um, picture quality. So this is the switch that I said were for NTSC and PAL. So I'm just going to tuck that back into that cupboard there. I believe that it's still in PAL mode, um, but we'll better tell that when it comes up on the screen. So I'm hoping you're going to get a good, clean image. I might have to focus in and out. Camera's going nuts because I've turned the lights out to try and get you some best capture quality. Um, so I'll show you the boot screen um, and then we'll I'll switch it off, I'll show you into NTSC mode so you can see what the screen looks like. So I'll just flick that switch now, let's see what happens. 
well. So you can see that it's lovely and crisp. Really is really nice. <laughs> really, really, really. Um, so that obviously that's looking like PAL. Now you won't see much difference when I put it into NTSC. You just flick that switch. I'll switch it off. You'll probably see the screen. The white rectangular box, the background that you can see on the screen, um, that may look more square. Um, and if you notice that the lettering as well might be a little bit taller, but you don't see a great deal. So I'll switch it off and just switch it back on, and that should be an NTSC now. So you can see how it's sort of punched it up a little bit, it's more square now. So that's running in NTSC mode. So let's just drop it back into PAL and let's have a look and um, see what the quality um, of the actual screen is when you're running something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the other TV out behind it so you get a little bit of the audio um, but I'll keep the camera on the front screen. So I've just plugged in the Ultimate 2 cartridge um, swapped it back to PAL so I'm just going to switch that on now, you'll see it built into a cartridge. You might be able to see on this screen, it looks a little bit lighter blue across the bottom of the screen. Um, trust me, in, in real life, you, you don't see that at all. It's just pure blue right across the screen. Let's have a look. It looks a little bit bright on the, when I'm recording on this screen. Um, but they are crisp. It is really, really crisp. So I bought um, Terrestrial uh, by Icon64 um, and they sent us out um, a Christmas demo as well that came with that. So I'm just going to leave that, fire that up, let you have a look at that. Um, and I'll wish you all a Merry Christmas and a great New Year and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you to all the subscribers. Thank you to everybody that watches the channel. It's been a great journey. Um, we've been going almost two years. The birthday of the channel should be coming up in February. If you would like to support us, please hit the subscribe um, and the notification bell. That helps me a lot. If you want to pop along to Facebook, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we do have a Facebook group. It's in The links are in the description. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and we're also on Patreon. So without ado, well, let's set this up. Let's take a look at this Christmas demo from Icon 